Oh, hello, Deacon Dennis. It's been a while. It has been a long time. I looked back in the studio, and, and our YouTube studio, December 17th. The last time we met to do this live from the living room. Um, and I'm sure people have just been waiting on the other side of this. On the camera. edge of their seat. I'm like, what are these crazy guys going to talk about next? Yeah, I, I'm curious too. But I, think <laughs> <laughs> I have some ideas. But um, it's just good to be back with you folks and Joe and I to chat with you again and and share a couple of things that are right. going on. And right. I mean, since the last time, December 17th. Then uh, we hope you had a wonderful Christmas. <clears throat> and Epiphany, and <laughs> Holy Family, and Baptism of the Lord, and all those things. All those wonderful yeah, items, yeah, 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 absolutely. And we had so many other things going on in there, baptisms and, 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 and funerals, so we had, a, we had a busy time. It was just really uh, busy. And there really, once we hit Christmas and things, we didn't have a lot of things to share. I mean, we could have done Ash Wednesday and things, so maybe we're a bit late and seek, so perhaps were a bit behind, but you're right, there were busy things going on. There was, there, there really was, and um, so it's it's one of those things that we just get caught up with so many other things that we, at least myself, but just the busyness of doing what we're here to do and hopefully uh, do. But we're like a, what, the bad penny or whatever, we keep turning up, you, you can't get rid of us. <laughs> so here we are again. Yes, exactly. Um, Dennis, how you been doing? What's been happening in your life? It just, How's your garage, which we haven't talked about for a while? Well, it's all insulated. I just got to paint the inside. And our cars inside of it in the midst of like this cold weather we've been having? It, interesting. I said, Zach, we're going to put your car in there. So I drove it in. And um, I wasn't there to help him get it out. He's not very good at backing. He didn't hit something that you just did. No, he, he drove off the edge and he... He had to really do a lot of shoveling to get the snow out of the way so he could back out. So he, do, you know, so he's got to be careful when he backs in and backs out or drives in and backs out. So it's just, but that was, but it, yeah, I, I said we're going to park it, and he's less, he's not as anxious to park it inside than I am. <laughs> does, does Zach know we're going to sully his good name on the uh, on the interwebs here? He will find out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he will. Yeah. So Zach. <laughs> Everybody know you buried your, your car in it. You. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully I can shame him in the backing and out of that oh, garage. Oh mercy. He, he said we gotta expand the driveway. Well well maybe perhaps we'll do that next year, but or this summer, but <clears throat> in the meantime, live within your limitations, right Joe? I mean that's right. Yeah. That's right. But this has gotta be painted on the inside and once it's all the walls are painted, I gotta throw white on there and then and then do us some a little more electrical and then I'll have my 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 garage. Hildy's well and yeah, things good. She's doing well, working hard and and yeah, it's she's doing well. Um, my children, my daughter, I should say, and grandchildren. I don't know if I mentioned this previously, but they moved to Tampa, Florida yep. area, yep. <clears throat> which is uh, harder to see them now. And so we do. I see a lot more of them on Facebook. Yeah. When I touch Facebook, which isn't that often anymore. Um, so that's as much as I get to see them. So yeah. it's really difficult. Yeah. 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 yeah, it would be. Yeah. Um, how about you, Joel? Yeah, things are well. We had a wonderful Christmas. Our, our kids, I was <coughs> mentioning to some others, uh, first time in about a year and a half that all of our kids have been under one roof. Uh, and we just had a wonderful time, played games, you know, just caught up, watched movies, enjoyed relaxing with each other. Renee and I flew to Atlanta, just a quick trip. Uh, because a former student of hers, my wife Renee, works in the school district down in, uh, in Sheboygan and is a counselor. One of her students got married in Atlanta two days after Christmas, and he is a Hindu. Ooh. So it was our first Hindu wedding that the oh, two that, of us got together. That had been interesting. It was fascinating, fascinating, and they were so gracious. Uh, and uh, it was just really enjoyable. So. Um, yeah, and then we've been busy with, as you said, baptisms, which is great. We love it. Keep them coming. Right. And uh, and seek, which was a wonderful. Um, do you want to tell the people a little bit about what I, seek? I was, was going to bring that up. And seek seek twenty one was actually twenty twenty one, but seek was it an opportunity for all of us? So if, when we think about getting closer to our Lord, getting into a relationship with Him, learning to be friends with Him. 
learning to grow deeper in that relationship. That was Seekers about, and small groups. And and when we think about small groups, my first immediate reaction was Alpha, and how we yeah. we did Alpha yeah. with small groups. This was much more deeper and, and more intense because it was within, within a few days, but it was powerful, move, powerfully moving. My sister went to it, my brother Dave went to it, yeah, both. and, and they, um, they were deeply moved on it. And the fact that their group plans on meeting um, and extending with that meeting, and so they were really excited about it. And my sister Donna, who recently came back to the faith, she said, Good what, member at Holy Rosary. Yeah, Welcome, Holy, Donna. Yes, Donna. And uh, I hope you hear your name, or I will make sure you do. <laughs> but don't tell your nephew, Zach, that he has been talked about here. Pass it along. <laughs> <laughs> but Donna, she said, for a returning Catholic, it was the most dynamic, intensive opportunity to, to learn a little bit more about her faith. And that was wonderful to see that hub pub and grow yep. and going on. Yep. And, and, um, and then my challenge was... was helping someone with something of which I needed to learn even more and that's with Rita and Zoom yes. and part and working with that because Rita had a Rita uh, Nigrelli had a, a Zoom group with that which she was so in tune with and it was this moving for all those people so overall in terms of learning about our faith but I think Joe Moore of how do we deepen our relationship with Christ to be friends yeah. and and because that's the best thing, and the only thing we should consider is being friends with Christ. And how do we do that? That enabled us to do it, and I could see it. it all those people, a hundred plus people. That, like, so I was, I was really moved by it. Um, and 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 in fact, just I can tell you quickly. I just somehow I I, I um, came across a Seek 2015, and I listened to Father Mike Schmidt. Really. And listen and and. My God, it was powerful. I, I couldn't stop that video because it was so engaging and so so compelling. So, see, when it comes again, if we have it again, plan to make it. So, and thank you, Dennis, for sharing, you know, the, the power. It, for those who don't know what SEEK is, it's put on by a, a group called FOCUS, Fellowship of Catholic University Students. They're based out of Colorado. They do a national conference every year because, of course, this year is COVID. Everything's different. They did it virtually and had more people by twice as much than they've ever had at these national conferences. And we were part of it. And we had 100 people. We, that was our goal. And we had 100. We had 10 small groups, uh, great small group leaders, great hosts and, and a, a committee that set everything up. Um, it was just wonderful, and we tapped into these speakers, like Father Mike Schmitz that uh, Dennis was talking about, uh, Bishop Barron, um, uh, a sister, and I don't remember her name, but that Thursday night, was, she was just terrific. But anyway, all these national speakers, and then we had all these other speakers on Saturday, so it was a four-day, I'll call it a retreat, kind of like a parish mission. And... Um, Bishop came down, we had Mass with Bishop Ricken, and uh, Mass every day, Reconciliation on Saturday, Adoration, which was a powerful evening. Just all kinds of wonderful good things. Uh, and they made fun of me, which was... Yeah, that was the most interesting and else? most fun part, because they, they had Play-Doh, and they tried to make an image of this guy out of Play-Doh, and it was, it was the, the diversity of it was really interesting. And, and I think you still have them in your, so in your office. There. I do, I do. So, uh, but Dennis's point is right. We may try to tap into Seek 22 next year, uh, depending on how that works out. But uh, if so, that would be wonderful. So, anyway, Dennis, what do we have going on now? What are some things? I know I've got a couple of major things I'd like to talk about, but... Uh, well, St. Anne, Anne, Saint Anne's coming up, and that's coming up, I think, the, 20, the 24th. They're having a first recon, first reconciliation. That's, that's I think we got to just pray for those children and and help them to well, that would have been last night that would have been last night yes and the other part of it, in terms about reconciliation and faith formation and all that whole dynamic i'm working with two people well first i'm working with a young man who came to me i think this is really cool joe i'm going to share this a young man who's 21 years old can i share his name why don't you just i'll just I, a young man 21 years yeah. old i won't go his name and he came to me he he searched for my name on the parish website, he he 
within the three, he found my phone number, called me on a weekend, and said, I want to come to the church. I want to join, I want to become Catholic. And he's, he's coming over from the Presbyterian side over to here, and having a wonderful, um, we're having a wonderful conversation, and we're going to be confirming this young man, 21, on the Feast of Pentecost. It just seems so up apropos. So appropriate. Um, yes, and he came, and, and he's, he's fully alive in this faith, and he's learning it much at a deeper level. Joe's seen him at various liturgies on the weekends. He's been here Ash Wednesday. It's a wonderful opportunity. <clears throat> and then there's another, and I think this is really cool, Joel. <clears throat> I'm, I'll be working with a young lady who's 13 and her mother. And this young lady is, is she and her mother and stepdad moved from North Dakota, and they've been in the area for a few years. And this little girl, young girl, wants to be come into the faith. She wants to be a Catholic. Because and be, her friend. And, and the witness that her friend gave to Yes. Because that was one of the major reasons. A Holy, Re Holy Rosary uh, student friend is Wednesday night go to religious ed, go to religious ed, and that witness was enough for her to say, I want to, I, I want to check this out. That's so and So great. we're going to begin this um, next week, Wednesday. We're going to meet every other week, and we won't be confirming her, but we'll be baptizing her, and but we want to get her hopefully in a place that she's comfortable when she enters into the fall session of this year with her age-appropriate group. So that's exciting. Her mother will be with her, um, which I'm really pleased about because there's, there's a lot can go, that interaction between mom and, and, and daughter and hopefully myself and maybe another person to help out here and there. But that, that's exciting, Joe, to see that, that the Spirit's alive and, and to witness that. That's, I'm really excited about that. Uh, and I want to jump with, uh, you talked about the first reconciliation that, that uh, we had for some St. Anne members last night uh, for Peter and Paul. That is taking place this coming Saturday. We've got 22 young boys and girls who will be receiving that sacrament for Holy Rosary. It happened about three weeks ago that we had six young boys and girls. So, I mean, again, that's all wonderful. And then in a couple of months, we'll be talking about First Communion for right. all of these. <clears throat> and they're excited about that. Uh, and they are. And, and we're grateful for the priests who are helping out. But this, it's, if you haven't been at that, not first reconciliation, but the sacrament of reconciliation in a while, urge you, we've got them at all three of our places. Uh, and again, it's just, I know it can be anxiety provoking. It can be, because we're like, I've got to look through my life and be able to share that. And that can be embarrassing, can be humbling. It certainly is. Yes. Uh, but, but, that's secondary. We don't, we don't call it confession for a reason because that's not where our focus is. It's called reconciliation, that a relationship that was divided, that was separated, is now reunited uh, in the forgiveness and grace and mercy of our God, which is stronger. The grace and mercy of God is stronger than all this stuff we bring to it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's what we long for, brothers and sisters. And of course God can, can forgive us. Uh, without going to the sacrament, but sometimes we need somebody to look at us and, and in voice tell us, you are forgiven. Yes. Um, because we're, we're, we're incarnate, or, or, you know, people, we're, we're, we're flesh and blood, and we need yeah. those senses sometimes to be fulfilled. And when you hear that, that you're fit, your sins are forgiven, there's a, at least for myself, there's a weight that's lifted off our shoulders that it's it's hard to to understand that until you're in that situation, which many of you out there have. But if you haven't been for a while, it's it's something to reevaluate and look at at a deeper level. Because this is a conversation between the priest, who is a veil, simply a veil for Christ. That conversation back and forth. What he said is right. And so join in that conversation and just have that dialogue, and 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 that's how we come become closer in friendship, closer relationship with Christ. It's all about relationships and breaking and bringing that relationship back in. And, and not just relationship with Christ. It's, it, see, that's the deal about reconciliation. It is not just reconciling me with Christ. It's also reconciling me with the community. Yeah. Because sin separates. That's what it does. It separates us from God. 
It separates us from one another. It separates us from ourselves. And that healing work happens at every one of those levels. Yes. Every one of those levels. Which is why one of the things I wanted to talk about today was the communal reconciliation service that we have coming up at uh, Saints Peter and Paul here. It's going to be on Thursday, March 11th. 6 o'clock over in the church here in Kiel, because we're coming at you from Kiel right now. Uh, and, um, and again, because sin is not a private thing, brothers and sisters, no matter what you think it is not, no matter what anybody tells you, they are wrong. Sin is public, because its effects are public. And therefore, reconciliation in its best capacity is also public. Um, and so what we do every Lent and every Advent, as best we can, is have a communal reconciliation service. Now, that does not mean you get up in front of the community and share your sins. No, that's still done individually. But what we do is we gather, and usually there are 40, 50, 60 of us. We hope you there are more this year. Um, but uh, we come together and uh, we have a 15-minute or so prayer service to begin uh, have a reading, have a reflection on that reading, have a little bit of music, an examination of conscience, Lord's Prayer. And then we'll have four priests in different locations, and we just invite people to go individually to the sacrament uh, for that mercy and grace that the priest as a veil, love that image that Dennis said, uh, for Christ gives to us. It is never, it is never private, and, and because... It's not. Because we and, and how I no how, sacrament is private. That's right. No. And when I when, and when Joe was saying that the analogy I have is that we are one sisters and brothers. We are one community, one body of Christ. And and if you use the analogy that if my if I get an infection here, it just doesn't affect my finger. It affects my whole person. And so it's it's that infection, and so it's never private, it's never one, it's all of us. We all suffer until we're reconciled back right. to that person of Christ. And and and, um, and and I wanted to say that with Joe, excellent and excellent point, it is never private. Yep. And we we always feel that as if it is, but certainly not. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So March 11, St. Peter and Paul, 6 o'clock. Come, come, be a part of that. <clears throat> Let's talk about the Lenten Project. Ah, that's because, a big you know deal. What? We got to talk about the Lenten Project. One, because I'm excited as the Dickens about it, uh, and because I think we're hitting a home run with this one. Yes, I and think two, so. uh, because it n is going to involve all of you in one way or the other. Whether that's helping with it, whether that's giving us wisdom and direction, and uh, or receiving, <laughs> because that's what we're talking. So, Lenten Project. You all know, and I'll just give my spiel. If you were at Holy Rosary, you're going to hear it again uh, This from this last weekend. But uh, you all know that we've been doing a rec uh, Lenten project for the last dozen or so years. Okay. Uh, we've done nationally ones, uh, internationally, locally. I mean, internationally, we've uh, built wells in Africa. We have uh, built uh, fish ponds in Haiti. Haiti, yes. Uh, we have done the bridge in Honduras, <coughs> you know, things like that. Nationally, we've helped, uh, you know, the um, in Milwaukee and Detroit, the uh, Capuchins, in honor of who is the saint that was just uh, done the cap. Oh, it was it was um, yeah, Solanus. Um, Solanus Casey. Solanus Casey, in honor of him. So we helped the needy in those areas. Uh, when Superstorm Sandy was out on the East Coast, about you know eight-ish years ago. We helped with the recovery efforts there. Locally, I mean, just last year, we helped with the food pantries in, uh, in the Holy Land here in Kiel, over in New Holstein, uh, for those people who were affected by the pandemic. You know, we, we just want to do these things. Well, this year, we decided to stay local as well uh, and reach out to those who I think have been most affected through this pandemic in the last year, and that is the homebound, uh, those who are in nursing facilities and uh, others. So I'll, I'll talk about the others in just a bit. But what our Lenten project is called this year is Reaching Out in Easter Joy. Because you know there's all this distance. We call it social distance. Dennis and I call it physical distance. You know, there's this distancing that we have to do. And, and to be safe, you know, we'll, we'll do it. We need to do what we need to do. But we want to reach beyond that. 
And so it's called Reaching Out in Easter Joy, because we want to give everybody who has felt distanced and alone and isolated this last year uh, a bag, an Easter gift bag, filled with lots of good items. And I'm not going to tell you what they're, what's in there, but let me tell you, I've been to a number of meetings, and we've got a lot of really good items. Uh, and every person um, who is in one of our six local nursing facilities in the New Holstein Keel area, so Willow Park, Willowdale, Homestead, Caring Hands, Oak Creek, Field of Dreams, every person, not just every Catholic, yeah. every resident <clears throat> will receive a gift bag in those. Uh, every homebound person on our um, uh, parish list from St. Anne, from Holy Rosary, from here at Peter and Paul, will receive one. But here's where we need your help, because we want not just those people all to receive one. We want anyone who is affected by this pandemic and hurting because of it to, to receive one. Maybe you've lost a loved one or you know somebody who has lost a loved one uh, because of this pandemic and couldn't be at the funeral or couldn't be there to say goodbye and so their heart hurts because of that. We want them to receive one. Maybe somebody's out of work because of this pandemic and, and we know the economic realities within it. We want them to receive one. Uh, maybe you or somebody you know has simply been anxious. Uh, maybe you're uh, on the more mature side of life and have been within your uh, condo or your apartment or your home for fear of going out and you've been out very little. We want you to receive one. So this is where we need your help. If you know anybody whose day would be brightened by receiving a gift bag, who this would be a pick-me-up, uh, again, in any of these circumstances or other ones that I'm, I'm not describing. Uh, maybe they're family members, neighbors. Maybe they're uh, in your own family, co-workers, friends. We don't, doesn't matter. If you know people whose day would be brightened by this, we need to know who they are. So we need you to call us in our parish offices. We need you to email us, write a letter, send a homing pigeon, send up smoke signals, you know, um, whatever you want to do, right? So we can get that information because we are going to create a list. And as many people as we get on that list, if we get 500 people on that list, Dennis, what are we going to do? We'll fill it. We'll fill them. That's what we're going to do. That's what we plan on. That's what we're going to do. So all this money we are raising in this Lenten project uh, is going to go to making however many gift bags we do. And then we get to deliver them all. Not just Dennis and I. Lord no. All of us. We'll talk about that at another Live from the Living Room, maybe in a couple weeks from now, yeah. about when we're going to make these and when we're going to deliver them, because we need you for that, too. Yes. And we want you. We have done our best to buy local, because we want to support the local community in the midst of this, too. We want to give these out to those people locally who have been affected by it, and we need you, our local people, to do it. So it's it's... It's an act of the community and for the community on behalf of the community all together. And so we're really excited about it. Now, our goal is $15,000, which you might think that's a whole lot of money. Here's why I have no doubt we can do it. None at all. Two years ago, we did the Honduras project. We blew that out of the water. I won't even tell you what it was, but we blew that number that I just gave you, 15000 out of the water. Last year, when we didn't have mass during Lent, uh, we almost hit that number. I want to say we were like $300 short of that number. Yes. Um, I mean, so again, I know we can do this. And I know that um, uh, it's going to touch a lot of people. Now, last thing I'll say, and I'll be quiet, and I'll let Dennis speak. Uh, any money we have left over. So let's say we have to make 500 gift bags, and that costs us $15,000. And, uh, and we get in 17500 Any money we have left over will be divided up between our six nursing facilities and given to their program directors or activity directors to use in their facilities for their residents as best they see fit. So we're just really excited about this. What do you think, Dennis? That's, that's exciting. And it's, what Joe mentioned is it is going to be given out because of Easter. The, the sun, the, the, the resurrection, we want to make sure people are aware of that. We want them to know that 
crisis for all of us, but even they share that love. And in terms of the Easter Christ, the Easter resurrection is given to you who most need it in this time of isolation, this time of fear, that you're connected to with us. We're all sisters and brothers. That's important to understand. It's not just something we want to do, this particular, but we want to get this done and by the people, if, I'm, if I understand right, and I don't want to jump the gun, but we want to do it by Easter Sunday. Oh, Dennis is 100% right. So right. Easter Sunday is a big deal, this year especially, because yep. of we need to share the Easter love they, that with those who now are in isolation or in, a, in an area that which they can't see and, and they can't be with anyone. But Christ is there with them, and with your help, we can make that connection even at a deeper level to let them know and give their hearts a little Easter joy, Easter sunshine. Yeah, yeah, Dennis is 100% right. We want, during Holy Week this year, that's when all these are going to be delivered. So You're going to be busy. We're going to ask for help. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Questions? You know where we are. Call us. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about, I hope you're hungry, because we've got a fish fry coming up. Yep. Uh, on uh, March 5th. March 5th. So not this coming Friday, but next Friday. So about... It's a Thursday, so eight days from now. Uh, we're recording this on the 25th. Uh, three to six in the afternoon is going to be, you know, we always do it over here in the in Voland Hall and, uh, and in the school. Uh, this year it's going to be a little bit different because everything's different in COVID, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's just going to be takeout only. But enter through the gym, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And it's a three-piece dinner with potatoes, coleslaw, you know... Uh, all the trimmings. All that works, yeah. And uh, if you want dessert, that's just an extra buck, extra, you know, dollar there. And, uh, and you, you got a sweet tooth, get a, ten, you got a sweet tooth, get a second one. Yep. So uh, come on by and order. And uh, yeah, that should be a big deal. I, and, and shift gears just a little bit, I just saw it and um, it was given to me. You might be aware of this, Joe, but. We're talking about Lent and reflections and retreats and that, and in that in that same vein, if you're not aware of that, if you're not aware of it, I think it's Monday, March eighth. Bishop Ricken is having a Zoom retreat from I think six o'clock to eight o'clock that night. For anybody? For anybody. So I wasn't aware of this. Zoom retreat with Bishop Ricken leading it, and it's going to be an opportunity for us to to listen to our bishop and in reflection. So I think it's 6 or 6.30 until 8 or 8.30ish from your home. It's, and so that's the, an opportunity to learn a little bit more about who we are in this time of, uh, in this time of Lent. And I think that's an exciting one. I want to get you more information and I'm going to give it to Kim to put it in our bulletin so that, and then I'll get the link so we can put it in there as well. And we'll, maybe you should talk about that it's coming up as well. Because I think that's the, something that we should share. Um, and, and so that's an exciting idea. Good idea. Good idea. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. The only other thing I want to remind us of is, is, you know, we're on this Lenten walk now. And we've been on it now for eight days. So we've got a lot more to go. Let's use this Lenten time to become new people. I mean, that's, that's of course, you know, you know this, I know this, so I, I please don't feel I'm, I'm up on my pedestal. But the whole difference is, this is not New Year's resolutions, just trying to see how much weight I can lose or whatever. It's, it's how can I change those habits? How can I repent, as Jesus says, to turn around, to think differently? How can I change those habits and ways of thinking and acting in my life? during this time so I can come as a new woman or man to the, to the waters of Easter uh, and, uh, and be a new life at there. And so use whatever tools there are. Stations of the Cross, which each of our three parishes has some of those times. Holy hours, which we have, you know, just to spend time before, in prayer before the Eucharist, uh, in silence. Uh, you know, we've got um, Formed has daily uh, meditations that they'll send out. Uh, I know that uh, Dynamic Catholic does that with Best Lent Ever. Uh, pick up some good spiritual reading, whatever that would be. If you don't have some, come by any of our parishes. We can get you some. Plenty there. Um, yeah, you know, just whatever your tool is, how can we be men and women of 
prayer and fasting and almsgiving, because that's the three-legged stool upon which we become new men and women uh, every Lent. So I just invite you further into that journey. And for those who can't get to the church for the Stations of the Cross, I didn't tell you this, Joe, but I'm going to I'm going to take this camera we're looking at right now, Joe and I, and I'm going to go. I'm going to plan on going to each church to do to record a Station of the Cross, so I can upload it to to the YouTube for those in assisted living in a nursing home. And one, I'm glad you're doing that because that's wonderful. So you can you can pray along with Dennis and, and whoever's leading those prayers at that time. But the other thing, and I'm glad you brought this up, Dennis, because I didn't think of it. Uh, Danielle has put some outdoor stations yes. across out here. And so along the now I'm at Keel and I'm pointing out to the back parking lot on the fence. If you've got one of these, uh, it's got a, one of those little boxes. What are those called? URL. Q. Not a URL. No, it's no, a uh, QR code. QR code. Um, yes. And there's if you if you notice on the bottom of like magazines or something, sometimes you'll see a little one by one inch black and white square or box or whatever. All you got to do is hold your camera phone up to it, and it'll give you an address. You click on that, and and it'll come up, and you can do the stations right on the outside outdoors. Uh, and do it if you don't have one of these that you can use. You, she's got some hard copies right there along the fence that you can lift up a box that keeps them dry, and you can just pray it on the outside. You can pray it in your car if that's what you want to do. All kinds of ways. So you can go in a church, but if you're not comfortable, you can do it outside. Exactly, yes. And, and so this opportunity to pray and journey with our Lord in the Via della Rosa to the cross, and and that's a, it's important opportunity to, to share that with him and you in in terms of our journey with him in this Lenten time. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time, too long, since we were with you. Our apologies. Uh, we let the communication slip there, um, but we are glad to be back. We're glad you're back. We hope to be back in, what, a couple of weeks, Dennis? Yes, I'd say a couple of weeks. Yeah. And, uh, and fill you in on what we're looking to for Holy Week and those liturgies and how we're going to make all these gift bags and other things. One more thing, Joe, I think we forgot to mention is those gift bags we put together, it was now going, it's called, what is now called, instead of the, the whole thing, Holy Rosary Gym, it's yeah. called Spartan yeah. Hall. Yeah, good call. Spartan Hall. Yep. So you'll be, we'll be working in, in Spartan Hall, the former Holy Rosary Gym, now the Spartan Hall. So I think that we yeah. get that out there too. Yeah, good call. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and hats off to Holy Rosary, particularly because for Sikh, they oh. have been tremendous. Phenomenal. Uh, you know, we everything was it was right over there in, in Spartan Hall and in the individual classrooms. And we lived in that uh, that space for about four days. So yes. and they were very gracious. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's it. Or do you have any more, Joe? That's all I've got. That's a lot, isn't it? Blessings to all of you. Thanks for uh, being with us. And uh, whatever, uh, just know you are in our love and our prayers. If you need anything, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Please, please give please. us a call for anything and, and keep us in prayer and as we keep you in prayer. That's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. And God bless. God bless.